Uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Žarko Miškovic, I am teaching assistant at Faculty of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Belgrade, and I present you our paper titled Statistical Correlation Between Vibration Characteristics, Surface Temperatures and Service Life of Rolling Bearings, Artificially Contaminated by Open Pit Coal Mine Debris Particles. Let's start with the main goal of our research. The main goal was to determine the statistically significant correlation between vibration characteristics, surface temperatures and service life of contaminated rolling bearings. Why is this correlation important? Take a look at this diagram here. Uh, this pie chart is presented by SKF from Sweden, uh, world leading bearing manufacturer, and as you can see, lubricant con contamination uh, caused more than 25% of all bearing failures. And also, vibro diagnostics and thermal imaging inspection are two most often used methods for monitoring of rolling bearing conditions. And how did we achieve this goal? Well, we developed and performed our own testing methodology. Our own testing methodology could be roughly separated in uh, two stages. First is preparation of experiment, and second stage is experiment itself. Uh, preparation of experiment consists of five phases. First is we need to decide what test samples would be used in our experiment and prepare them. Second phase is selection and preparation of artificial contaminant particles we use in our experiment. Third phase is preparation of mixtures of artificially contaminated grease with different concentration level of contaminant particles. Fourth stage is determination of experimental load and rotational speed we'll use during the testing. Fifth stage is setting up of testing devices and then experiment itself is consisted of testing of pairs of artificially contaminated rolling bearings on our own testing machine through 10 hours. Our testing lasts for 10 hours for each pair of test bearing and during the testing surface temperatures and bearing vibrations or uh, vibration acceleration expressed as RMS values are measured every 30 minutes and finally we process the results in special software for statistical analysis. And I'll explain now all of these phases. So, as I said, the first phase was to choose a representative test sample. We decide that we will test for where iris ball bearings. Here is a photo of cross-section of one conveyor idler. Conveyor idler is machine assembly used on open pit coal mines as a support for conveyor belt and for material being transported. As you can see, it's consisted of shaft, shell, pair of rolling bearings, and pair of sealing groups. And we, dec we decided that in our experiment we'll test single row radial ball bearing of type 6310C3 with uh, increased internal radial clearance. And in this table you can see some technical characteristic of those bearings. And why did we, did we decide to test exactly this type of bearings? Because they are most commonly used in conveyor idlers with outer diameter of 159 millimeters. And one more reason why we chose precisely those bearings, because conveyor idlers are operating in very in extremely harsh and aggressive environment. You can see that uh, there is evident uh, uh, that this environment is, is there is huge concentration of different contamination particles. Here is a coal dust, here is a surface dust, here is excavation dirt, etc. And this slide is also very important. This fish diagram here is also presented by SKF from Sweden. And these are all the factors influencing the bearing performances. As you can see, the type of bearing, the precision of bearing, the clearance of bearing, heat treatment of bearing material, sealing group, 
dimension, speed, scale, publication, all those factors affect pairing service, pairing performance. And why is this important for our experiment? Because our tested samples must be tested in the same condition, except for the level of concentration of contamination particles in debris. We want to vary the, uh, this level of contamination, of concentration. And we also decided that of all those factors, internal radial planes <coughs> and principal dimensions of tested bearings are very important. So they must be the same for all tested specimens. And that's why this uh, phase was performed. Internal radial clearance testing and final selection of test samples. We've tested bearings, internal radial clearance in our own Rolling Bearings certified testing laboratory. We've tested 17 samples and among them we chose six for further testing because their internal radial clearance was the same, 30 micrometers. And here is a Bell's curve of obtained results of all 70 tested samples. And why is internal radial clearance so important? Because after a while, the wear due to contamination increases the bearing internal radial clearance and thus affecting the overall bearing vibrations. Okay. This next phase was selection and preparation of artificial contaminant particles. We performed this phase in three activities. First was identification, sampling and testing of contamination particles present at open pit coal mines. Then we disassembled few failed conveyor idlers which failed in real exploitational conditions. Uh, we extruded their bearings and determined the particles which directly caused their failure. And third activity was preparation of contamination particle for artificial contamination of clean breeze. Now, take a look at this photo. This is open pit coal mine Brno, located in the Republic of Serbia. On site, we found uh, three different types of contamination particle presence. First type is excavation dirt, dirt from the land being excavated. Second type of contamination particle is coal dust. As you can see, coal has also been transported by conveyor idlers. And third type of contamination particles is surface dust. Dust. It could be found everywhere on open pit. So we've tested those three samples. These are characteristic of surface dust. We test chemical composition, size distribution, and we obtain some scanning electron microscope images from those three types of contamination particles. These are the results for surface dust. As you can see, in this mixture of contamination particles, we found quartz, feldspar, viscous, sodalite, clay, etc. This diagram here represents the particle size distribution of this of surface dust particles. And here are two scanning electron microscope images from surface dust particles. This is the second type of contamination particles present at all open pit coal mines. This is coal dust, as we expected, is consisted of carbon, quartz, clay, and some other organic components. This is particle size distribution of this mixture of contamination particles, and there are two obtained scanning electron microscope images. And this is third type of contamination particles present at open pit coal mines, excavation dirt. It's mostly consisted of hematite, dent of microtone, and of quartz. And here is particle size distribution of these contamination particles mixtures. Mixture, and uh, there are two photos from scan scanning electron microscope of this particular contamination particle mixture. Then we used 15 failed conveyor idlers. We disassembled them in our laboratory uh, using special special tools developed just for this experiment. And we also used several hydraulic dynamic and static material testing machine made from Zwick Royal in Ulm in Germany. Uh, then we extruded, we extracted contamination particles from failing, failed bearings and we compared the results of analysis of 
those real contamination particles with previous results and we find out that typical cause of conveyor idle bearings failure is not the excavation is the excavation dirt and not the surface dust as we expected because surface dust was everywhere and excavation dirt was just in layers of ground being excavated so we finally prepare particles for artificial bearing contamination we sew them, de sew them uh, with appropriate mechanical screen with mesh size less than 120 micrometers and then dry them on 120 degrees Celsius for two hours. And this is the equipment we use for mechanical sewing. Uh, another phase, next phase, was preparation of mixture of contaminated grids. We decided that representative grids we use in our experiment as a base grids for further contamination was SKF LGV A2 grids. Why we chose precisely these grids? because of its high endurance and temperature resistance and also because this grease is most commonly used in conveyor idle rolling bearings. We experimentally determined that the average amount of grease in new bearings is 9.3 grams. How we, did we determine it? Well, we measured the mass of new bearings, then we cleaned bearings from, from their grease and measured their mass again. The difference is those two, those two masses show us th this value. And during this testing, we used metron scales with 0.001 gram precision. And we prepared three samples of pre-contaminated degrees with uh, three different concentration levels of contaminant particles inside them. First sample grease was clean grease. Second was grease with 10.75% with of contaminant particles and grease with 21.5% of contaminant particles. Okay. Uh, it was also very important to decide which experimental radial load and rotational speed we will use. We decided to use experimental radial load during the testing of 4.6 kN. This is roughly two times larger than exploitation radial load when coal is being transported. And we also used uh, experimental rotational speed of 1140 rounds per minute. And it was, it, it, this value is also roughly two times uh, larger than operational rotational speed. When conveyor idler has outer diameter of 159 millimeters, and conveyor belt carrying material is speed velocity is 5 meters per second. Uh, we chose those values on purpose because we want, we wish to accelerate bearing failure uh, comparing to real exploitation on working conditions. And we calculated that acceleration of failure of testing bearing is approximately 22.7 times. This uh, number here could be interpreted that one hour of bearings works in described experimental conditions corresponds to 22.7 hours of its real working of, of its working real working condition without contamination particles. And finally, we set up our testing machines. This is test frame we used. This picture here shows you the working principle of our test frame. We developed on our own faculty. As you can see, experimental radial load is achieved by this lever and appropriate weight. Experimental rotational speed is achieved with, with this belt transmission system. This is overall look of test, test frame. And there are two measurement places, one for bearing one, for bearing two. But for this research, for this specific research, only results from measurement place two are relevant because uh, mounting conditions in measuring place one were not recommended, were not uh, standardized. And we also use thermal imaging <coughs> camera. Oh, okay, I briefly show you the, the results. This is experimental testing procedure. Finally, we obtained 378 thermal images. We find the maximal temperatures of bearings inner rings and outer rings. And here are the results of temperature of bearing temperatures measurements for measuring place one for measuring place two. 
and these are the results of vibration measurements for measuring place one, for measuring place two, for different level of concentration of contaminant particles in burning degrees. This is a presentation of this is presentation of relevant results. This is the results of discussion. You can read it in our paper. And finally, this is a statistical correlation we found based on uh, strong results. As you can see, the coefficient of multiple determination for this mathematical model is 0.8. And finally, potential practical benefit of our statistical correlation is that expensive equipment for vibration measurement, which is worth more than 10,000 euros, could be replaced with much cheaper equipment, for example, contactless infrared thermometers. Thank you for the attention. I would answer the question if there are any.